So that was my hike to Mühlinger in the Faroe Islands and I'll be diving into the guide part and talk about all the info you need if you're planning on doing this hike yourself. But before that, I just want to say that this video has been sponsored by Samsung and their latest SSD, the T7 Shield. It's a rugged and durable SSD made for travelers and content creators such as myself. So Samsung sent this over so I could test it out on my latest trip to the Faroe Islands where as you can see I faced various of different weather conditions but since it's IP65 rated which means it's water and dust resistant as well as being drop resistant of up to 3 meters this little guy handled everything as a champ. It only weighs 98 grams which means it's super light and portable and I just don't really see any reason not to bring it with me on any trip in the future because it's so light and portable. So I was able to back up in the field with this SSD with using this sort of weird setup that I have just using the iPhone and the SD card to back it up. If you're using Android it might be a lot simpler for you. Transfer files to and from the SSD was super quick. And I could even edit my 4K videos straight off the SSD, which was super useful, which is what I did with this video that you're seeing. But overall, I've been happy with the SSD and its performance. It lived up to all my expectations and I don't see why I wouldn't bring it with me on any future trips because it's so light and portable and also durable, which is important to keep my footage safe. So yeah, thank you Samsung for sponsoring this video. And if you want to support me and or help me, the best way is really just to check out my sponsors, you know, check out the links below if you're interested in the SSD yourself. All right, so let's dive in to the guide part of the video. All right, so what you're seeing right now is the All Trails map interface. And uh, this is my custom map of the route I took to Mühlinger. And I'll be sharing the hiking map and everything in the description box below if you're interested. So the hike starts at um, the village called Chernovik, which is a well-known sort of village in um, in the Faroe Islands. So known for a lot of surfing. You can actually come, come here and rent like surfboards and everything like that. It's also well known of like this view of the village, like towards the sea stacks in the distance. So, you know, if you're in the Faroe Islands, you'll probably uh, come by here at some point. Uh, but the trailhead is right in sort of the, the little village and the trail kind of just heads behind the, the village itself and sort of like a steady incline up. I know that all trails makes it look super dramatic. It's not as bad as it looks basically. Uh, but yeah, you kind of just have a very nice steady incline up uh, towards the plateau. So once you get to the plateau, it's where it gets sort of a bit flat and you're actually walking on the trail towards Saxon which is another well-known trail, but you're only gonna walk half of this because as you can see here, it kind of deviates. We're gonna deviate off the path, off to sort of this sort of more of an unmarked trail. You're just literally just walking on grass and rocks and whatnot. And you're gonna follow this sort of ridge line, this cliff here, cliff side. Um, you can head up to the viewpoint. There's a little peak here. Um, yet again, Ultras doesn't really show it, but there's a little peak here you can go up to get a little view. If the weather's nice, I would say it's unnecessary because you're going to be able to see moving gear and the surrounding area just by following sort of the ridge line here. And I say with nice weather because as you may have seen uh, on my first attempt and um, yeah, if you didn't notice, I did the hike in two attempts. So the first attempt I was faced with like just a lot of clouds um, and foggy weather, like where visibility was very low. I couldn't see more than like a couple of meters or feet in front of me, which was you know, quite bad visibility wise. I definitely noticed myself veering off uh, of the path a bit um, and sort of just doing these unnecessary declines, inclines up and down, just wasting a lot of energy and time to do that. I actually met a couple of local sort of hikers and I, we kind of, I kind of followed them sort of sporadically. Uh, so I wasn't like completely alone. So there was a little bit of uh, solace in that, I guess, solace in that sort of uh, that you're not completely alone on the hike. But nevertheless, you know, the visibility was so low and I ended up like on top of Mullingar without even noticing it really, you know, only the seagulls were there and they were probably looking at what is this dumb human doing up here? Yeah, just, I was thinking like if I gotten closer to Mullingar, I would see it and maybe the clouds would part and clear up. Didn't happen. Um, so on my second attempt, the weather was a lot nicer 
And this funny thing is weather forecast wise, um, it said that the day before the weather would have been better than the next day, but I found that to be the opposite. So you can't really hundred percent trust weather forecasts out here. You kind of need to go to the destination and kind of just eye it. And if there's no like clouds above and stuff like that, you're pretty safe to go, I would say. But yeah, so my second attempt it was a lot nicer weather and a lot easier to do it a lot quicker for me to get up. Now you can follow the ridge line, uh, the cliffside, and you'll stay up there and you get like a nice view of Millingear. But you can also head down, which is what I did. And if you want to head down to Millingear itself, uh, you need to follow like this very small and narrow sort of sheep path, which kind of disappears sort of like a quarter way down. And then you kind of just have, have a zigzag scramble your way down. It's quite steep. So I really only recommend you doing it if you're like an experienced hiker or you're just very sure footed. Uh, but if you do do it, you're going to come down and you're going to get like a very nice view of Mulingur and you can even, you know, climb Mulingur or like just walk up it if you want to. Uh, so that's up to you. And, you know, once you're done, it's just the same way back again. Uh, very simple. Just follow the same way back. There isn't really any other path to really follow to get back to Trinity. Um, but yeah, it's also just, I guess, safest to just follow the path back. So that was my guide. That was sort of all the information I had about Mullinger. It's, it's a very nice hike. It's probably my favorite hike in the Fair Islands as of right now, because there isn't a lot of sort of long distance trails in the Fair Islands. If you want to do a long distance thing, you kind of need to like combine different trails and walk on roads and stuff, which I don't think is really ideal personally. So yeah, that's all I have for this sort of hiking Mullinger video. I'll be linking sort of the hiking map and the all trails app in the description box below. So do check it out. So I'll be probably posting one or two more videos about the Faroe Islands. So look forward to that. If you want to watch some more Faroe Islands content, uh, I'll be going on a trip very soon to shoot another video. But until then, guys, thank you for uh, watching the video. Thank you for the support as always. This is Alan. I'll see you guys in the next one.